question number four. The matrix M represents the sequence of two transformations in the XY plane given by a rotation of 60 degrees anticlockwise about the origin followed by a one-way stretch in the X direction scale factor D where D is not equal to zero. So on A, find M in terms of D. So here we've got a composite transformation and first we have a rotation of 60 degrees anticlockwise about the origin. Now here I would want you to consider a unit square on the Cartesian plane and for this unit square if we are going to rotate it by 60 degrees about the origin going anticlockwise we will eventually have the transformed square being this one. Now, the point 1, 0 has its image as this point, which has an x coordinate of half and a y coordinate of root 3 over 2. This you can find using simple trigonometry. That's the unit cosine of 60 and the unit sine of 60. So we are saying here the point 1, 0 is being transformed onto the point a half and root 3 over 2. And what about the point 0, 1? The point 0, 1 here has been transformed onto this point here through the rotation of 60 degrees going anticlockwise about the origin. So the new coordinates are minus root 3 over 2 and a half. So we're saying the point zero 01 is being transformed to minus root 3 over 2 and a half. So from combining these, we can come out with the operator matrix. So let's write it down here. So we're saying the first transformation, that is the rotation of 60 degrees anticlockwise about the origin. The matrix is a half and root 3 over 2, then minus root 3 over 2 and a half. So this is the matrix. Now let us consider the one-way stretch in the x direction. So in this case, the unit square is being stretched parallel to the x-axis and the scale factor is D. So that automatically means that the point 1, 0 has been transformed onto the point D0. And the point 0, 1 remains invariant since it's a one-way stretch. So the point 0, 1 is mapped onto itself. So by combining these, we come out with the operator matrix. So I'll write that down. That's the one-way stretch. With factor D, the matrix is D, 0, 0, 1. So we now have the two matrices. Now, in order for us to come with the matrix M, which combines the two matrices, we will multiply the two matrices representing the transformation in reverse order. So since the first transformation is the rotation and the second transformation is the one-way stretch, we will pre-multiply with the one-way stretch matrix. And here we'll be having a half and root 3 over 2, then minus root 3 over 2 and a half here. So I'll multiply the two matrices. So row by column D times a half plus zero times root three over two, that gives me half of D. Then D times minus root three over two plus zero times a half, we get minus root three over two D. Then zero times a half plus one times root three over two, we get root three over two. And zero times minus root three over two plus one times a half, we get a half. 
So this becomes the matrix M. So we're done with part A. We can now move on to part B. So on part B, the unit square in the XY plane is transformed by M onto a parallelogram of area half D squared units. Show that D is equal to 2. All right, so right here, we obtained the matrix for transformation M, which I'm going to take from here. So here it is, and I'm going to find the determinant of this matrix. So that's going to be half D times a half. So that's half D times a half. And that's minus the product of minus root 3 over 2D and root 3 over 2. So this is going to give me here a quarter D and that's minus of minus three quarters. That's three quarter D. So that's a quarter D minus minus three quarter D, which is just a quarter D plus three quarter D, which gives us D. Now, therefore, if I multiply the determinant of M, which happens to be D, times the area of the unit square, which is one, they say here, that this transforms to a parallelogram of area half d squared. So I can solve for d here by multiplying both sides by 2. So that's 2d is equal to d squared. And dividing both sides by d, I get d coming out as 2. Actually, d has two values of which the other one is 0, but d cannot take the value 0. So here, I'll eventually get the value of d coming out as 2 and that's the answer to part B let's scroll down to part C so on part C it says the matrix N is such that MN is equal to the matrix 1 1 a half and a half so on C they say find N now in order for us to find N we will need to first find the inverse of M. Now on part A, we had obtained the value of M as this one. And on part B, we discovered that the value of D is 2. So if we substitute 2 for D, we will get M coming out as this. Now the inverse of M therefore so M inverse should therefore come out as 1 over the determinant of M, which is 2. And here, switching the positions of 1 and of a half, we'll be having a half here and 1 here. And for this 2, if we are going to change the signs, then we will have this becoming root 3 and this becoming minus root 3 over 2. So we now have M inverse. Now we know that to get rid of the M on the left hand side so that we are left with N, we have to multiply both sides by the inverse of M. So if we multiply the left side by the inverse of M, then we'll be left with N on the left side. And we are going to multiply the right side again with the inverse of M. So that will be a half here. That's M multiplying the matrix 1, 1, a half, a half. So let's do the multiplication. So here I'll carry down the half. Then I'll multiply a half times 1 plus root 3 times a half. I get a half plus root 3 over 2. And again here, I multiply half times 1 plus root 3 times a half. I get a half plus root 3 over 2. Again, minus root 3 over 2 times 1 plus 1 times a half. I get minus root 3 over 2 
plus a half. And then lastly, minus root 3 over 2 times 1 plus 1 times a half. That's minus root 3 over 2 plus a half. So this is what I now have. Now here, this can be simplified to, I have the half here and uh, at the top we can have 1 plus root 3 o over 2, 1 plus root 3 o over 2 and here we can have, have it as 1 minus root 3 all over 2 and uh, 1 minus root 3 all over 2 and now factoring out a half then the half multiplies the half that's already outside to give us a quarter so we are left inside with 1 plus root 3 1 plus root 3 1 minus root 3 and 1 minus root 3 so now we have the matrix and simplified so that's how we do it we can now scroll down to part d so on part d they say find the equations of the invariant lines through the origin of the transformation in the xy plane represented by mn so now we have the matrix mn and from part C, we got MN to be the matrix 1, 1, a half, and a half here. Now, the invariant lines through the origin are lines of the form Y is equal to MX. And uh, if um, X is equal to K, then y is equal to k so therefore the general point for any point on any of those lines will be the point k and mk that is if we substitute k for x so that's the general point for any point on these lines so it means that if we are going to transform through this matrix mn which is one one a half a half then this is going to give us an image x y so this is what we're going to work on so here i'll multiply row by column top row and column we get uh, one times k plus one times mk we get k plus mk and half times k plus half times mk we get a half k plus a half mk so this gives us an image xy so we're saying here x is equal to k plus mk and y is equal to half k plus half mk now since the equation of the lines is y is equal to mx for y i'll have a half k plus half mk and that's equal to m of x which we got to be k plus mk so i'll simplify but i'm sure you can see that k appears on all the terms so i'll divide it out i'll divide it through so that it gets eliminated so we ha we now have a half plus half m is equal to m plus m squared now i can multiply all the sides by two but let me scroll down a bit so i'll be having this coming out as one plus m is equal to two m plus 2m squared this gives us an equation 2m squared plus m minus 1 equal to 0 and I can factorize this so I have 2m here and m here and I will have 
minus 1 here and uh, plus 1 here. So I've thus factorized it. So we get the values uh, of m as a half and m as minus 1. So if we are going to substitute these values into the equation y is equal to mx, then it means that we'll be having the equations for our solutions. y is equal to half of x and y is equal to minus 1 of x, which is minus x. So this two become the two solutions. And that's it for this question.